How many of you were alive 35 years ago? Come on, raise your hand. Oh, there's a lot of you old folks out there. Great. So 35 years ago, our country had its own special moment in time, the bicentennial of our country celebrating 200 years of independence. 35 years ago, I was uh, living on an Air Force base in Nebraska in the full spirit of the bicentennial. My bedroom, curtains and bedspread were star-spangled banners. I only, only thought back of this because of Ruth and what was actually happening. It was so uh, excessive that even the gravel in my aquarium was red, white, and blue, right? But the most significant piece of bicentennial uh, uh, memorabilia I had was a Sears Free Spirit 10-speed bicentennial bicycle, right? So I was fully in that particular moment of time. During the bicentennial for the country, there were a lot of significant events and programs. One of those significant items was actually an event called the Bike Centennial. That event, <laughs> that event created the first transcontinental bike ride and the first transcontinental bike route uh, in the country, right? That event was conceived by two very enthusiastic bikers that were making a trip from Anchorage, Alaska to, to Tierra del Fuego, the hemisphere right, 18,000 miles on a bike ride. So I guess you have a lot of time to think about things on an 18,000 mile bike ride. It turns out that one of those organizers also created the event that we have here in our community that just celebrated its 50th anniversary, and that's Tosser, the ride of the Sayota River Valley. It turns out that one, of that one of those people also has become, if not the most, one of the most significant advocates for walkable, bikeable, livable communities in the country, having helped 3,000 communities around the country. His work is so profound, in fact, that in 2001, Time Magazine named him one of the six most significant civic innovators in the world, right? It turns out, it turns out that that individual is in fact one of our own. Dan Burden, grew up three miles from Kosai and Westgate, was educated by our schools, was educated at The Ohio State University, and has gone on to do great things. I'm revealing to you one of many, many stories uh, about the people of our community. So for about the last four years, I've been involved in the city's bicentennial uh, program at various times more and less intense. It happens to be that we're 50 days, uh, 12 hours, and about 50 minutes from when it is. So it's getting more and more intense as we wrap up. Many of you have probably heard that this is a 12-month robust commemoration of our city, right? But I believe that many of you are asking sort of what is the so what? What is it about this? that makes it more than just a party and a parade. Now, I've been thinking about that for, for quite a while, about what is the larger and higher purpose. It was always clear to me that there was something really special about this opportunity, especially when the leaders of the community said, we're not just gonna celebrate the day, we're not gonna just celebrate the week, but we're gonna celebrate the entire year, right? But it wasn't clear to me till earlier this spring when I was an event that was featuring some of our young talent, some of our young entrepreneurs in the community. The panelists at the end of that program ask the young folks there that in thinking about the future, what is it that they most hope for for the future of the community? Tanisha Robinson, I don't know if you know Tanisha or not, but without skipping a beat, out of her mouth, I'm sorry, out of her mouth was, I want Columbus to be revealed, right? And for me, that was really sort of the essence, you know, one of those like blinding flashes of the obvious that we have, right? Of course we want to reveal. This community has so much to be proud of, so much that we're doing and so much more that we're capable of, that we don't have to create a bunch of new stuff for the bicentennial. We really need to reveal what we have. So what does it mean to reveal? In my uh, work with some undergraduate Ohio State students right now, they're working right now on, in a studio 
on community legacy planning. And they framed their own definition about what it meant to reveal a community. And it's about us exposing things that really aren't known. But for them, one of the key words was about what's been forgotten. In 200 years of history, there's a lot that we've forgotten and maybe take for granted. Maybe in our general humble nature that we don't always uh, appreciate. So we've asked them in, in their definition to do that. Some of you know that our community has innovated such things like the xerography uh, process or the barcode, but our community has also innovated in candies. The reason that M&Ms do not melt in your hands is because of the thoughtful innovation that has happened here at Battelle. Now the barcode is really cool and great, but for me the M&Ms are much more significant. Right? Making things is important and revealing the things that we make are important as well, but so is doing. Two weeks ago today, in our Columbus, in, in Columbus, we had an event, the Highball Masquerade, right? That revealed in a pretty flashy way just how smart and open, or in the words of Mayor Coleman, how creative and cool, you know, Columbus is. So these things are important. Now, I don't want you to get the point, the idea that the revealing is really just about all the great stories, because authentic revealing, whether that's about a person or a place, is also being willing to look at things that maybe aren't points of pride. Later this month, the Community Research Partners is going to unveil their annual benchmarking study. What they're gonna tell this community is that for two out of the last three years of communities that we compare ourselves, whether it's Chicago or Austin or Cincinnati or Cleveland, that we will have two out of the last three years the highest poverty rate in the metro areas of these other communities. Now that's gotta be an opportunity for a community who wants to believe that they're smart and open, and so we have to do that. Why is revealing important? I believe that there are a couple of things here that are important to what we're doing. That if we reveal authentically about who we are, we can make this community prouder. That if we're prouder, we can have greater confidence. And if we have greater confidence, then there's much more in terms of possibilities about what we can become. The pride is important, and many of you may say, well, that's, of course it's important. There's a study that was just released last year, three-year study by the Gallup organization that looked at what were the underlying root causes of economic prosperity in communities. It turns out that the level of emotional attachment that people have for their place may in fact mo may be the most significant indicator of economic opportunity. And that is the first order goal of 200 Columbus, the Bicentennial, is to lift pride. Right? Why is confidence important? I like to think about confidence being the sweet spot between arrogance and despair, right? right? If, you're, if you're too arrogant, you know, that's not a very humble. We're not going to be arrogant here. And having a little bit of insecurity is also important to us as well. I don't know if, if any or any of you have seen this mural in the Tuttle Park in Columbus, right? This, this is a mural that's called Cowtown Culture. Now, the community is in the midst of an extraordinary collaborative imaging marketing effort for the city, right? In part because when you, when you test Columbus in terms of the identity outside the market, it doesn't test particularly well. For those in the community who think the worst thing to not really having an identity is it's a tie to a Caltown mentality or Caltown culture, having a mural, right, that's about 100 feet long is probably not a point of pride. The young artist who put this together, Andrew Kearns, this is just a fifth of the panel, right? And you might see a small cow up there. This whole mural has its sprinkling of cows, but so much more of it is about pride. I think if I were to have named this, this mural for Andrew, I would have called it Cowtown Culture, my ass. That's what it looks like, right? It's like, I dare you, I dare you to point you know, to that. So one of our major initiatives next year is an effort called Public Art 2012 a significant installment. One of the artists is proposing a significant installation on the Scioto River, right? Are we, are we able, as a community, to embrace this, right? Are we secure enough to enjoy what this is about? We all have parts of our past that maybe aren't points of pride, maybe don't show up on our resume, but they make us who we are. This is part of the rich story about who we, who we are. So, I talked about Dan, and he is a point of pride for us, but what I would want you to know about Dan is that Dan saw the bicentennial for this country as a platform for action, a platform for doing something significant. I want you, all of you here, 
to see this next year as a platform, a platform for your neighborhood, a platform for your organization or your business to do good works and reveal the possibilities for the future of this great city. In doing so, and I hope you take that, that seriously as a responsibility to this community, that you will join a significant effort to bind this community civically at a time and a way that we've never had the opportunity before. So please join us and thank you very much.